Okay, here we go, another shaky hand video. I'm sorry, I suck, but my heart's in the right place. All right, let's make this cut. Um, just checking my wire out. I'm gonna start with the bottom cut. I, I wish I had a little bit of more of an overhang here, so that I, otherwise, at this point, I'm just gonna have to dive in like that. I gotta go boom and bring it all the way across. Um, and I'm gonna have to cross in front of this camera, which is gonna make it tricky. All right, so uh, I'm firing up the wire. And I can feel the, I can feel the charge in the wire. I'm looking down the line here. I'm gonna get underneath and do the bottom cut first. Boom. I'm staying a little ahead of the wire here. I don't have too much pressure on the wire. 10 pounds, maybe. Again, here gets a little weird. There we go, boom. Clean the wire off. Burn the crap out of your finger. You're not cutting foam if you ain't burning yourself. Woo. I got that wire running a little hotter than maybe I should. All right, so, uh, Top cut, here we go, no fooling around. Line up the wire. <laughs> Close one eye. Here we go, boom beep, boom beep, boom beep. Yup, mistake because I had to go over the camera, so I'm gonna have a bump in this phone. If you're gonna cut phone, you're gonna make mistakes. All right, there we go. Let's clean the wire and see what we got going. The uh, smoke here is toxic. I should be wearing a mask. You can probably see in the background, I got a big honking fan, Home Depot fan going. I'm gonna turn this power off, uncharge the wire. I have a bump in this wing, which is somewhere, it's right there. And I can probably just sand that baby out and it'll be fine. I, my hand bumped into the camera. So, like I was saying, it's easy to mess up. You got one shot at it and it takes some practice. All right, that's about as good as it gets. Hey, I burned my finger. Ouch! Sheesh. Okay. I'm gonna make a million dollars with these videos. It's gonna be worth it. Charging the wire. I'm running hot here. I got it on my thermal generator plus 150 by Tacoa, and I'm literally at at the uh, I'm literally at the nine o'clock mark here on the dial on the sizzle wire side. We'll show that up later. All right, here we go. I've got to get under the bottom here. And bang into this baby. So uh, say a prayer, and here we go. I'm angling up on the wire a little bit as I'm dragging it. I probably got about 10 pounds of pressure here. I don't know. Less can be more. Trying to stay ahead of it a little. Watching out for the end. Boom. Clean off the wire, burn the crap out of your finger. And <laughs> hopefully I just cut the bottom one, yes. All right, we're going for the top. Deep breath. Well, of course, deep breath with all this toxic is not good. Okay, so I'm a little low to the table here, and I'm going to have to really angle down on this handle. I may have to use my hand here a little, so here we go. Go one for the top cut, and off we go. I'm pressing down a little bit on the wire here to keep it a little bit of an angle. Not too much pressure. I tend to put too much pressure on it. I'm just cooking through this. This wire's running hot. Here we go. Come up to the end. Big finish here. Yo! Mm. Very good. Pulling these T pins out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, um, 
kind of nice to, it still is pretty smooth, kind of nice to clean those edges before you do the next cut. Uh, let's get the bottom one out. Foam cutting, lots of room for hilarity. I stole that from somebody. All right, let's, uh, let's move this camera up where we can get a good look at it. All right, that's gotta be good enough. Let's see what we're looking like. Yeah, whatever. All right, so I'm taking off the top here. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. So, also, I've got a nice little nick right here in the end when I was first cutting the foam. Can you see that? But it won't be a big deal. Man, if I can get two good wing cuts off of these two pieces, I'd be in good shape. Otherwise, I gotta buy more foam, spend more money. There's the bottom. And it looks good. Nice. Got oh, some dimply dimplies. If the dimplies are too much, uh, I'll put a little bit of light filler on there. I usually like to use this stuff. Light filler. Probably like what used to be called Marvel Magic. All right, so that's the one wing I got a little divot in. You can see it from here. Divot, divot. You can have no bumps when you're running that wire through that wing, man. You can't touch nothing. Or you will ruin the wing. Interesting that so deep inside I got these little bumply, dip, dimply divots. Whatever. Okay, bottom wing. This is the bottom side. That looks good. And the top side. Nice. I don't know, I might leave a little sandpaper over it. No, no, it's nice. So there we go, let's put them up side by side. Got a nice little nicky nicky here on the end from when I was cutting this foam. But uh, a little filler with that. Also, we'll fix that. Not gonna be a problem. Okay, where am I at here? There we go, there we go. There we go. Those are two RG14 by 8.4%. Just a straight up CompuFoil figure duration. Uh, 24 inches each, I believe. It was. Yeah, about 24 inches. Screaming in the mic here. 24 inches, and I'll put a half inch or an inch tip on both sides remains to be seen. I'd like to get it out to 50 inches and I, I'm using this white foam because I want it light. All right, very good. All right, let's make another cut. Let's try not to screw this one up. Cut the camera off to the side. Let's check out my templates. It feel pretty good. I'm running that flipping wire so hot that uh, it'll burn right through anything that's on those edges. But I'll take a little paper towel here. Give it a little rubby rubby. Polish up the edge a little, that's good. This feel good. All right, I need some uh, little paper towels here that I can use for wiping the wire once we're through it. So I think I've just ripped up some paper towels. It's nice. All right, let's get those. Uh, let's get these uh, airfoils on. I've got it with the leading edge outside. I'm coming in from the wire this way. I got a mark on the table. I'm lining it up here. Looking good. Get a little weight on it. Is the table perfectly level? Oh, hell no. What, you think I'm doing oh, a perfect job here? My goodness, I'm making a slope glider. It's pretty flat, doggone it. And I, it lines up nicely with my wire. I need to show you guys that. So, um, I need to 
leading edge out here. I got a little mark for where it's going to give me a quarter inch. I will glue on a quarter inch leading edge basswood. Uh, I guess the taper will vary. Uh, TFLG would know this real well. Uh, down here, because I'm the the wire mid middle is right here, and so if I go up, I'm going to have quite an angle going down to where it comes out at the tip. So I just like to get it here about a half inch above the center line. It's been working good for me. Kind of nice. This is a, a much thicker piece of foam than I would usually use. This is a four inch thick foam. I like the three inch and I can, um, I can get away with a, a two inch foam block. I like that. I use the uh, blue foam on that. But when I went to get this foam, it was the only size they had the big old four inch I think it was like 20 bucks plus tax now if I could get two nice wings out of this without screwing one of them up that would be a bonus you're gonna cut wings you're gonna screw up especially in the beginning it takes practice even when you've had practice and you're pretty good at it you'll still screw up it's nice. It's always a challenge. You got one shot when that wire fires up and starts going through that foam. I was lucky I only got a little bump on that last one that I can sand out. That'll be fine. Mistakes. Probably make the best planes you'll ever make. Alright, so I'm doing... Some people like to use rivets sticking in here, but I like the little small T-pins. They're going smooth. You want to put that T-pin that I'm putting in, you want to put it in nice in the center so it isn't sticking at an angle and hits your wire as it goes by. These are pretty thick airfoil, so I don't really stand a chance of doing that. But when you get a thin airfoil, real thin, you want to get that, you want to get that pin to go in, you know, straight in 90 degrees whatever all right so that's pretty good yeah I'm digging it okay move my little oh heck I can put them over here okay so uh, I'm all locked in um, on this other camera you can see I've got the uh, thermal generator I had it set at nine o'clock here which is between 40 inches and 52 inches that worked pretty well don't change anything and screw it up all right I'm gonna check my wire feels pretty good you can see here with the uh, other camera maybe that um, my wire goes through the center marks that I put on this uh, foam and that's good that means I have an even uh, pretty much the same airflow top and bottom all right Oh, am I a little nervous? You betcha! Here we go. Charging up the wire. You can feel it vibrate. And cut the bottom first and the top one. Here we go. Woo! I'm a little ahead of the wire. Won't be too much. Kind of letting it catch up to me. I've got it kind of on an up angle. So it stays against that doggone edge on that template. Getting towards the end here. It gets funky on the end. I stay with it. Stay with it. Yes. That last little part ain't so easy. I know I make it look really easy. <laughs> Going for the top cut. I have a feather cut foam cutter, but I like cutting wings like this. It's fast. And, and the wings are nice. All right, here we go, going for the top. Ooh. Come on, mama. 8.47. I'm pulling a little too hard on the wire. I need to chill out. I move forward a little. I'm letting the wire kind of catch up to me, but I'm, I'm keeping it going, I'm keeping it going. I'm gonna just kind of pull on it when I get here to straighten it out and have it pop out the end. Keep it moving. Do not stall on the wire. You stall, you're going to have a groove. You will have ruined the wing. 
takes practice. Be prepared for it. It's worth it, though. When they come out sweet, oh, man, nothing better. You can see that this is burning the crud out of my paper towel. That's not so good. That's very hot. I'd like it a little less burn. But you know what? That last wing came out so good, I'm not changing nothing. Oh, I'm such a rebel. All right, here we go. Bottom cut and off we go. I get impatient. Come on, baby. Keep it going. Keep it going. Stay focused. Stay focused. You have to stay focused through the whole thing. Focus. Focus. Bring it to the end, brother. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Pull a little. Pull a little. Bring it out. Bring it out. There you go. You know, really, on that last part, I have no clue. I hope it came out nice. I think I've done it a number of times, and as much as I think that was kind of a screw up, it seems to come out pretty good. All right, that was the bottom cut. Going for the top cut, and I'm going to do my old put my hand on the wire. It's not hot back here. Here we go. And boom, let's go. Let's go, baby. Stay focused. Keep it moving. You must show the white foam who is boss. Oh, I think I screwed up in the end there, screwing around the wire right in here. <laughs> mm, I hope not. We'll see. Just burning that paper towel. Shame on me. All right, uncharge the wire. Put it on my little holder. Let's pull the pins out. I don't know if I screwed up that last little I got a little I got a little twitchy on the end there. I need to put some lines on the side of that baby so that I can when you're taking the airfoil in and out all the time and working with it uh, with the uh, the saddles, the cradles. Here we go. This will help me keep track of what's going on. We're going to do that on the tip. I learned that from TFLG and Inland Slope. Rebels, shout out to those guys. Good group of flyers have helped me out over the years immensely. Love flying with them. Living the amigos. Okay, uh, let's take it off, man. Let's see what we got. Falling around. Oh, it's kind of a gabber. All right, I got a lead. You can see, I got a mark here. Leading edge, trailing edge. Open her up. A little bit of hair there, that's good. You get a little hair that's that's uh, uh, on the surface. That's supposed to be good for your cutting at the right temperature. I've got a little groove. Not much, not much. No, that's nice. A little liney. Got to keep that wire moving. Keep that wire moving. Don't stall. No fooling around. Stay ahead of it. Here's the other one. That's the bottom, the top. Feeling for any kind of ridges or bumps. And it feels pretty good, I mean, my goodness. Okay, and there we go. And, uh, and the bottom. Let's bring them out together, baby. Bring them out together. It's a bench fly. Let's see, I got a little, 
I get a little whoop de doo there. So a little sanding, little sanding. Little bumpy bump. But those will be nice. And the edges are good. Oh, very nice. All right, so now this is where, why I put those wires on. Wires, where I put those lines on. It's the top, middle, bottom. Well, that's not right. And that's not right. Wrong wing, come on. There we go. Yes, sir. -y. That would be negative. That's working for me. Yeah, we're on track. And the top enchilada. Trailing edge. Down the line, there's the leading edge. I don't know how you can see it. These cameras have such small little screens. Hope for the best. All right, so looking good. Yay. On my sort of level, relatively level table. Nice. Don't tell Russ Thompson. He'll kill me. Okay, so... Uh, Let's talk about a couple of things. I wanted to get the wing cutting right out of the way at the first because, I don't know, man, I kind of hate videos that take a long time to get to what it is I wanted to see in the first place. But this is kind of a long video because now I'm going to talk about what's going on here. I should be using this mask. But I have a killer fan. That's a Home Depot big old honker. It really gets up there. High speed, medium, and low. It's rid of the toxic uh, smoke. I, you know, all the cutting I just did, I don't really smell much. It's nice. It throws it out the brush. Uh, this is a 3M mask, and it has the pink filters. Is that, well, what's with the pink filters? Well, they're acid uh, filtering. And I learned that from one of the guys down in uh, Repco or whatever, down by Costa Mesa, the chemical place. They, they were saying, oh, yeah, the guy wants to do epoxy, and he wanted acid filters. I like, always want acid filters for epoxy, but evidently he felt that acid was an epoxy. And I'm like, seriously, is that true? And then I thought about, well, here's my hardener. And if you look at my hardener right there, see that white, crusty stuff that's coming out of the edges? That looks just like the white, crusty stuff that comes out on your battery in your car. And that's acid battery in the car. So I'm saying there's a good chance... There's acid working with uh, epoxy, so thus get yourself some acid filters. I mean, you know, what can it hoit? What can it hoit? All right, where else am I here? I'm using a wire from TFLG. He recommends this Cabela's 0.016 wire, fishing leader. And that's what I'm using on this. And it heats up pretty dynamically compared to uh, the sizzle wire from Tacoa and the other wires. I mean, this thing burnt that, word, burnt that crap out of my finger. <laughs> uh, yeah, it really heats up. You can use a lower setting on this. It's smoking. You can see the setting I have here. Oh, it's like at nine o'clock between 40 and 52 inches wire. That was running pretty doggone hot, but I thought the cut was nice. If I go less, I'll be sitting there, for, I'll be waiting till Christmas for the dog thing, doggone thing to cut. I got a little um, a little wooden handle that I wrapped the wire around. This is my adjustable mount so I can go up and down with the wire. I, it literally is just a, a threaded rod buried in epoxy so that it's solid. I can take this piece off the table. It's got two screws that go into the table. When I'm done, I'll take it off. But I epoxy this in. There's a bolt on the bottom. Really lock this 
threaded nut in so that I could run, this tape's on there so I don't poke my eye out, so I could run these bolts up and down and be dug on solid, and with this washer that I put a little hole in and my little fish hook, I can now move this wire up and down. Let's see if you can see it. I got that wire lining up with the center marks on my phone. Whoops, center mark. Center mark. Right, just the height of that enchilada until I got my wire pretty much running across the center of the foam. That keeps me out of trouble. And then I've got a little center line here on the end where I lay my templates and I, and I make my cut. That's it, let's make a wing. Hey folks, if you liked the video, please remember to subscribe and hit the like button. And if you didn't like the video, please make sure you hit the subscribe and the like button. And if you wanna be notified for my next shaky masterpiece, hit the bell button, which ought to be around there somewhere. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh my, I'm sorry. You can't cut a wing without doing a bench fly. Where are my manners? All right. <laughs> I can hear my cat meowing in the distance. Jake, what's up, Jake? All right, let's see here. This is the top left wing, top right wing. Here's one of the little, little whoop de do. This is, uh, I had asked TFLG for a design for a PSS model that I could make and mold myself. And I like to build a plane over and over a few times and really get the hang of it. And so this is his Raptor. Bench fly. Where's the cat? Come here, you little coochie. Cat video. And here's the larger, heavier Raptor at 80 ounces for uh, Point Furman, which I think we have to wait till June to fly. So this one, uh, this one I hope to get under under 22 ounces and fly it at Long Beach Bluff here in Southern California. Oh, let's screw this plane up nicely. Yay! I'm burning fingers and breaking planes. Stay. I got little magnets. I like those. It needs a peg up front. All right. Let's see what that looks like in the camera. Cool. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Okay, so let's take a look at this setup here. stainless steel wood screws, a couple of holes in the table. Um, what I did here is my anchor for my hot wire is to uh, drill a hole and then there are two nuts in there that I'm putting this threaded rod into and tighten them up and then I dropped and I, I, I didn't drill it this large all the way through. I went in about no, oh, I don't know, halfway. So I could get two nuts in there and, and uh, tighten them together. And then I think I pushed the whole thing through. And then I used epoxy with carbon fiber, mixed with carbon fiber because I wanted it strong. And I mooshed it all up in there and let it dry. And then I sand it. So uh, And then on the other side also where I had maybe some gaps, uh, I did the epoxy and the epoxy and carbon fiber in here. So I'd have a nice solid threaded rod here sticking out of this piece of basswood okay and then you can see i've got uh i've got two nuts sandwiching a washer which i drilled a little hole in went down to the local fishing shop and got myself a little 
leader clip, whatever you want to call that. And then attach it to the table. Okay, locked in. Uh, I'm gonna use this string. I think you could see it better. The view screen on this camera, so don't wanna poke my eye out. Okay, so to get that locked in. So then I've got my, uh, this is just a string, right? I'm not, so you can see it. I'll have a handle on one side over here, oh, over to the, over there, <laughs> over the handle over there. Okay, so I got my foam. And I'll bring it up to the wire. In this case, I just brought the wire back a little bit from being straight in the middle. I guess if I was a genius and thought about this first, I would have put the foam block here and, well, not really, I would have ran the wire down the middle, but no. Um, TFLG says it right. I get it to where it's about parallel. The wire is about parallel with my what the leading edge would be. Now, if you can see that, I'd be using a small. I'm going to use a small quarter inch leading edge. So I'm pretty good there. I moved it back a little bit. Let's take a look at that down the line. You can see that. So I felt that was kind of a, I felt that was a good spot. All right, then I'm looking at the other side. Need more length on this cable. La 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 la. All right, so now I'm looking down this other side, looking down the line, and I like it to be. That's not bad, you know, because uh, I'm going to add a trailing edge, an inch and a half, at least an inch and a half trailing edge is going to glue, glue to the wing here, and so I want I want to see that nice and almost parallel to it. And then over here, I want to see the leading edge pretty much parallel. I'm, I'm mostly interested in the leading edge. So I'm going to change this just a little bit. Now you can see once I got it right, or I felt I had it right, I, I took a marker and, and uh, got the place where I wanted it. So I, I thought that was pretty good. Oops. A little more. A little more there. Yeah, I'm gonna take some practice. All right, so that looked good. And my exit, that's about a two inch to get it parallel, but not bad. It's, it's not gonna be perfect. The wire will enter. You want it to enter at the same time, but no, it's gonna enter the root area first, right here by my root area. Boom, and it's gonna travel through the foam. <laughs> It's gonna travel through the foam and it's gonna exit. You'll see it exiting there, the, ta the uh, tip first and then, and then everything else. And sometimes it's held in there. I just gotta keep it steady as it comes out. And that's been, that's been working pretty well for me. Yeah, so you find this spot in the wire as you're looking for it, moving the foam forwards and backwards away from your pivot point until you find where the leading edge the, the wire is out a little bit like this, and it's kind of parallel in that, what your leading edge is gonna be, whether it's gonna be a quarter inch like this one, or if you're gonna do something that's maybe a little bigger, like a three quarter inch, which is one of the heavier slope gliders, so it'd be like that right here, and then boom, again, I'm entering from the, the root first. And you find your sweet spot, and for me, this has been pretty good. And then you attach your, 
you attach your airfoils here and you run your cut you run your cuts like I did the main thing about that pivot is that I can get my wire do I have it on this one I get my wire to run down the middle to line up on the middle of that doggone foam thing I made a mistake and did it on the uh, trailing edge here and then I did it right on the other one but you can see on the trailing edge here that my wire once it's in the middle boom it's gonna hit that mark at the at the back there and then right here so it's pretty much right in the middle of my foam That's a big piece of foam bigger than I would normally use I'd rather have a three inch or uh, as you can see I have a lot of blue foam over there and that's two inch thick and that's usually what I'm using but this white foam is uh, very light and will give me a little bit of a lighter wing and I'm going for a very light plane this time so there we go once I got that lined up in the middle and uh, of course I would have done that on the leading edge here not the trailing edge we lined it up in the middle and then I'm looking to see that I'm a little bit out from the leading edge and we got kind of a sort of a parallel inch and a half out and then I, I run it boom all right I hope that helps okay also my wires I'm gonna take my wires that go to the power source and I'm gonna attach them remember this is a, a cord this is not the wire I just using it because <laughs> so you can see the dog on there. all right so I'm gonna attach it up about there coming straight off the table and on the other one on the other side I'm going to attach it right about a little bit out from the foam you could probably see that when I was cutting and so I'm I'm there with my wires going down under the table to my power source I'm out what I six inches or so from the phone and uh, and then we're ready to cut okay